Hey class, I'm Mr. Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Moments of a Force. This topic was suggested by Adam G. If there's a topic you'd like to suggest, then just leave a comment below. Now a moment is any turning effect which is caused by a force. Let me give you an example. This spanner here. This spanner allows me to multiply the amount of force I can apply. It's basically a very simple lever. A lever has two parts. It has a pivot and then it has the body of the lever itself, a rod. So if I'm trying to use this, I'll tighten this part of the spanner and I'll tighten it around a nut and as I try and turn that nut to loosen it or tighten it, this is going to be my pivot. This is going to be the part that the everything else, that the whole rest of the lever moves around. And so if I was trying to do that and turn it just here, it wouldn't actually turn very easily. It'd be really difficult for me to turn it. If I put my hand over here though and turn it this way, it would be much, much, much easier for me to turn it because I'm multiplying the amount of force I can apply. It's not that I've got any better grip. I mean, if I held it like that, I'd have just as good a grip. It's that I'm able to multiply my force. That's all that a lever does. It's a very simple but very useful machine and you'll see them everywhere. Let's have a look at another example of levers and forces, this time in our own body. If I take a weight like this, this isn't a particularly heavy weight, but it can cause a problem for me depending on how I hold it. If I hold it like this, then my arm is pivoting around my shoulder, the weight is held nice and close towards the pivot, and it's not a problem. I could stand here for quite a long time holding the weight like this, and it wouldn't really bother me too much. If I change the way I'm holding it, then it becomes a problem. If I put the weight straight out to the side like this, suddenly its distance from the pivot is much bigger. And you can probably see I'm already starting to strain to hold it. It's much, much more difficult. And I'm going to struggle to be able to hold this weight because it's able to apply a much bigger force because all of a sudden the lever, my arm here, has placed it much further away from the pivot, my shoulder. We use the equation m equals f times d to give us the size of a moment. That means m for the moment equals the force in newtons multiplied by the distance that that force is applied on a lever, the distance from a pivot. Because force is measured in newtons and distance is measured in meters, the units of moments are newton meters. It's just those two units multiplied together. So let's take a very quick, simple example. If we have a force of five newtons being applied two meters from a pivot, then the moment is just five newtons multiplied by two meters, which gives us a moment of 10 newton meters. Sometimes we'll have a force applied to two sides of a pivot, for example, in a seesaw. Let's look at an example of that and just extend our understanding a little bit. In the seesaw, we have people on both sides. But the seesaw teaches us something quite important. If the seesaw starts to turn, then the moments on one side or the other are unbalanced. Whereas if the seesaw is balanced, like we have here, then the moments on either side are balanced. Now, if you've ever been on a seesaw, you've probably seen this sort of thing. If you've got someone who's heavier on one side than the person on the other side, then if the heavier person sits closer to the pivot, then they apply less of a moment because whilst the, their force may be bigger, their distance is going to be smaller. So the product of the two, their force multiplied by their distance, that's going to equal the same as a smaller person who's got a bigger distance from the pivot. There's one more thing which you need to understand about moments, which is that if the moments either side of a pivot are balanced, then that object won't turn. Now that sounds a little bit abstract, so let me give you a practical example. And I'm going to start with this hammer. I'm going to connect this hammer to this ruler and all I'm going to use is one elastic band and I'm going to set up a system which doesn't look like it should balance but should. Now this system here looks horribly unbalanced yet if I just rock it slightly you can see that it is perfectly balanced about this central pivot point. It's balancing just on my finger there. Now this isn't a trick. This is actually some solid science. We've got a long lever here but relatively little weight and we've got a relatively short distance between the pivot and the weight on this side. The majority of the mass of the hammer and therefore the majority of the weight is in the head here. And so although it looks like the whole thing is hanging off that side, actually we do have some of the weight over on this side as well. 
And we, in effect, have two moments. We've got one moment acting that way and one moment acting this way. And the pair of them must be equal and opposite. And we can tell that they're equal and opposite simply because the whole thing is balanced. It's not turning. This is the key thing to take away from this, that if you've got a system which is not turning, then the moments in either direction must be balanced. The moment on this side and the moment on that side have got to be balanced because this whole thing, as unstable as it looks, is actually balanced and it's not turning in either direction. For foundation tier, that's all you need to worry about. You need to be able to put numbers into the equation m equals f times d. You need to understand what a lever looks like and the idea that it's got a pivot that everything moves around. And you need to be aware of if you've got a seesaw or something which looks like a seesaw, say for example, a crane or a parking barrier. If it isn't turning, then the moments either side of the pivot must be balanced. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.